the American Psychological Association, people who deal with mental problems, stress, all that sort of thing, as far as I know, have not written books on the effects of environment upon behavior and criticizing the way government operates. It's insane, and I've never found them to talk about government that way. Maybe they'd lose appropriations if they did. But I don't know whether it's in appropriations or understanding human behavior. I know of no group of psychologists that advocated social change in order to avoid most stresses and most of the problems that people have. I've never known neurologists that laid out a plan for informing people with better methods of evaluation so that they don't have the stresses they have. Therefore, all their books seem to be maps of the brain and what region of the brain controls what pattern of behavior, which is all right and that anatomically, but does not describe or alleviate problems. Knowing the anatomy of the brain will tell you that a tumor in a given location will cut out speech or visual. That's all good information. But that's not what the Venus Project is about. The Venus Project is about finding solutions or workable ways of influencing people to modify their behavior to fit the circumstances of the world, not the opinions or reactions or emotions of an individual. So when a person says to me, let's have input from the scientific community, the reason I don't go for that, because the scientific community never came up and said, why go to the moon when the earth is falling apart? Let's solve those problems first. They don't participate. They don't seem to suggest a direction. They merely describe the anatomy of the brain, which is all right. I have nothing against it, but they have no direction. I've never known the American Association of Architects to lay out a whole city system. They say the green rooftop, well, the greening of a, of, of a building does not change society. So the reason I do not seek information from the academic world is because they don't take it far enough. They deal with limited aspects of human behavior and limited functions of the brain. They study the brain. I would imagine, like I said before, if I fly over a village of thatched huts, which are up on stilts in water, I can tell you that the people probably live on fish and their values are related to the coconuts and the food available on the island and the, the problems they have with other islanders wanting to take their women or their food away from them. So their philosophy would be a simple one, would not be high-level communication. So you don't need to go there and study the people. Just take a photograph. A photograph of New York City, Chicago, L.A., any city shows every building a different size which means every man for himself, which means it's a selfish, self-centered culture. I don't need to ask what people are like in Chicago. I know by looking at the city and the fact that they tolerate what exists. I haven't heard school teachers say, let us make education relevant to the needs of people. I've never heard the descriptive system from universities or any elaborate organization the democratic concept, for example, where everybody participates and contributes, I believe they can only contribute that which they've learned from the culture. And they can't be that different and be a member of a standard organization. Now, if a person says there are lots of aspects of the Venus Project that Jacques doesn't cover, you haven't asked those questions. How do you know that? So you have to say, Andrew, what are his views on child nurturing? What are his views on family? What are his views on education? And get that down and compare it with the academic world. You'll find that it's very different, except the anatomy. When a doctor says this is a knee reflex, this is a temporal lobe, he's right, frontal lobe, all that's a map. There's nothing the matter with that, but it doesn't deal with any problems. 
I find most architects self-centered, designing buildings and being proud of what they design and sharing rooftops of green, which is all right, but that isn't the answer to the problems. So I felt if the academic world had any validity, they'd be at, in confrontation with established views. I do not find that. So I do not find, even B.F. Skinner did not go into the anatomy of a new culture, how it works, what type of education for children. Uh, I asked Skinner whether he thought man was a machine, meaning reasonably connected. By machine I mean you can't roll your eyes in a given position unless there's a muscle that pulls it there. That's what I mean by mechanistic. You can't see unless the visual system is supplied with light and the back of the brain is supplied with enough associations to interpret the forms around them. So education comes from the environment and as, as you pointed out, all cultures are primitive because they're in a state of evolution. Primitive compared to what? Compared to what there is to know about people. We are primitive. As long as we have prisons and military solutions, we are primitive. I will never listen to military people for their solutions to problems unless they have outgrown that and have come to new conclusions. Like General Westmoreland, if it was General Westmoreland, or Eisenhower when he said, beware of the military-industrial complex. I wish he elaborated more on that and spent more time on that. Uh, but he didn't. Apparently, he felt by saying that he would alert people to be conscious of that area. Judgments are based on cultural systems, otherwise no one would ever go to a movie because it has nothing to offer. No one would watch soap operas because it has nothing to offer. It's a repeat of the same story. Jealousy, our present-day concepts of love and family are always uniform. If they weren't, it would not become popular. If a person is elected to be president by a group of Americans, they do not have the ability to judge a person's ability to manage society. They do not have the kind of training to nominate the proper people for education, neither do the educators. But when you take a course in engineering, as long as they deal with structures, and torsional loads and compression loads, it's okay. But how is it to be used? Engineers don't give a shit. If it's a fascist culture or a democratic culture, they make engineering projects for that culture. Engineers do not collectively, as a rule, in numbers, step out of engineering and say, what is it for? How is it to be used? I refuse to work on weapons of mass destruction. I'd rather work on studying the culture that we disagree with and see if we can find areas of agreement, not destruction. So I do not personally find evidence to align myself with scientists. I never met a scientist. Just like I said, I never met a Christian that upheld the Christian doctrine. A scientist to me would be into sociology, anthropology, engineering to some extent, electronics to some extent, you know what I mean? To whatever extent they can be, they would be interested. And in saying, I don't know enough about decision making and different cultures to want to destroy them. I'd like to understand them before. I'd like to talk to their leaders. Even if he talked to the leaders with an American value system, he could not hear them. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You can't talk things over if you speak a different language and have a different reaction to words. If people do not understand the Venus Project, isn't that Fresco likes to dictate the ways? I'd like to understand what they have to offer to alter society. I'm not interested in three views to an airplane unless I know what that plane is for. Do you understand what I'm saying? I hope this answers the question as why I do not usually join scientific committees, 
because I do not find them to be scientific nor oriented to be able to handle the wide range of problems. So I consider almost every society primitive. And if you disagree with me, what I'd like to do is put forth areas that, for, that enable me to see the shortcomings. But don't say, I don't agree with them. Point out to the area of disagreement or what you think you disagree with. But without a conversation, <coughs> without attending the tours, without sitting down and sharing ideas, it'd be very difficult to know exactly how I mean certain words. There are many semantic problems that can be resolved with a personal meeting. I don't know how to resolve problems with scientists in general. Unless I meet with them as individuals for a given amount of time, I can't give a guy in 20 minutes what I believe, even if he's a scientist. There are some scientists that will take to this right away, I know that, because they're looking for answers and they don't have the tools. I haven't met many, I've met many scientists, but I've only had brief encounters with them, like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, but never a long period of exchange of ideas so far. This is the reason I do not seek answers from the academic world. If they are academic, it means they accept, or they accept to a large portion what goes on. That's my reason. What has to be done is people should investigate the, the educational system of the Venus Project, what it offers. Then it must then look into the environmental aspects of the Venus Project, how we intend to support and restore the damaged environment. Then what different types of vehicles would be used for transportation, how we solve the transportation problem. If they find shortcomings in it, say, present your recommendations. But don't say, I don't like that system. Present your recommendations or alternatives. If you want people to be safe in swimming, safe from sharks, you really don't have to make a swimming pool any deeper than five feet. You can swim in five feet of water. It's hard to drown. If you can't make it, you can reach bottom. And children's pools, would be shallow, and you can swim in it. You can't drown in it. Why is it? I didn't that I like shallow pools. If children have difficulty, can't always see it. I think our friend's child was drowned because mother couldn't watch over her in the ocean. And she blamed the old man. The old man blamed the mother for not watching. And then they both blamed the lifeguard. You know, it, it's inadequate systems is what you're dealing with. You understand? I don't find lifeguards to submit new ways of watching over people on the beach. They're always a lifeguard. They never seem to innovate or make a life preserver connected to a cable that goes out to the drowning person. That's what they need, not the lifeguard grabbing them. They need this thing getting there faster. The lifeguard can only get there at a certain speed. So I would design a life raft that moved out very fast stop by proximity mechanisms and then move slowly toward the person so they can grab it. And if they can't grab it, you send human assistance on a vehicle out that way. Anyway, I've never heard of lifeguard associations making recommendations except binoculars for the lifeguard to look around. Well, but limited, very limited. Lifeguards are not trained as innovators. But if you bring innovators to the system and say, how can you innovate that system to make it more efficient? If a man is mechanical, he might make a life preserver connected to a cable. If he's electronic, in the electronics, he would pick up distress in the water. You know, whatever it is. But I don't find academia to be critical of the political system. I don't find many opinions coming forth on how to modify our system so that we have less problems. I don't find that. Now in books on politics, I don't think George Washington will be surprised at the decision making today because it's not that different. Uh, Benjamin Franklin or anybody else, 
Our political system is based on opinions, projections, inadequacies, incompetence. That's why I say they would feel at home in this society, but they would not feel at home in the Venus Project. No politician would know how decisions are made. They wouldn't understand why our schools are the way they are. They wouldn't. Even if they came and visited the schools, they wouldn't understand. They wouldn't understand the nature of environmental reclamation, why it's done. And they wouldn't understand where you get the money to do environmental reclamations. If the earth is declared common heritage, that's the only way you can have access to anything. I can't understand if you have basic, all your decisions on how much will it cost, well, you wouldn't do anything, because everything costs a lot of money, except war. It makes a lot of money. It isn't that I want to direct the whole thing. I haven't gotten assistance from others on how to put up buildings faster that were that new, so I had to innovate all this shit, because I didn't get anything from others. I'm not interested in doing all that. I'd rather have people capable of knowing when they see a ship, what is it you want? You want the whole cargo unloaded at a given place. You don't want to take off one container at a time. That's okay if different containers go different places and we got one ship. But in the future you must design automobile manufacturing in a certain region so you deliver metals to that region, not all over Detroit or wherever you have auto factories. You have automotive production in a given region, you know what I mean, with production lines, so you deliver more stuff, the same kind of stuff, to all the auto producers. Cows and farming would be in a region, with farming canning factories nearby the farm, and not 50 miles away. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't know any other system. I've never heard of a food producer that said, I'm going to open a cannery on my grounds so I can can the string beans. And besides, they wouldn't rot if he did that right away. I never heard of an undertaker making recommendations for the use of usable organs before the burial. You know what I mean? A kidney, whatever it is you could get. And you don't ask people whether they want to give their kidney if they're, they're, they're dead. They, you say, well, I want to be buried whole. The Jews do not permit dissection. But the Jews won't ever know what the inside of the body is like if you don't permit dissection. You know what I mean? But people will die due to their belief systems. But if you want to go with that belief system, you can go. But I can assure you, you won't live as long as other systems. And if our system can't make the appropriate decisions, we'll be surpassed by China or North Korea or some other country that can make those decisions. I don't say they will, but we will be surpassed if we can't make the appropriate decision. So nature is a final eliminator, not fresco. I don't eliminate people. If, if their insufficiency is every man for himself, and that society will run as long as evolution will permit it to run. You know, until the system is automated and they fall on their face. That doesn't mean social change will be made. It means people might die fighting each other and killing each other <coughs> and riots because of different values. Unless there's something put out there that people can understand. I think I could sell the package, if not all the people, a great many people, enough to influence them. Because I don't come there as an American to get them to accept our value system as the only one. And you don't attack their customs. You wait till evolution passes, the need for customs of that kind. There are a group of Israelis that are interested in the Venus Project. But if I went to Israel, I'd be booed off the platform. The majority does not believe does not lean towards science, you know what I mean? So, I would try if I were invited, don't misunderstand me. If there were a big enough group in Israel, I would go there and talk to that group and tell them how to reach the other group. If I talk to the other group, I need three days, not one hour lecture. I never came up with ideas.
because academicians approved it. I came up with them trying to find a working solution. Academia doesn't know how to stop wars. Academia doesn't know how to ask, what is the bomber for? They don't seem to do that. That's why I don't respect them. If they understand my direction, that's more important than being a member of academia. And people would say to me, are there any great people that accept the Venus Project? There's something the matter with them. They have a low self-sufficiency. If the great man says it's a good idea, they'll follow it. I don't want that kind of shit. Do you understand? If you say, are there any famous people that accept the Venus Project? Not that I know of. Because that you will then go along, because Einstein said it was okay. What about you? Okay, so if you understand what I'm talking about, you say it's okay, even though the world doesn't agree with you. The guys in the old days that believed the Earth was round must have had a very rough time with academia. I think it was academia that burnt them. It's academia today that can cut you off, that can say the man's completely unqualified, never went to MIT, has no record of achievement in this world. This is all true, but that doesn't mean anything. What means something is that people understand that if you don't take care of the environment, you lose it. That isn't difficult, but it may be, I guess the experts know what they're doing. Let's leave it to politicians. At least they know what they're doing. I don't believe they even know what they're doing. I don't believe they have the slightest idea of what they're doing. I believe they're academicians that believe one opinion is as good as another. How many Catholics visit a Lutheran or Presbyterian church to get their point of view, to go feel which one is close? Some do, I don't doubt that. There are many religious people that go to different churches and stop at the one nearest to their values. That's what all people do. And if they all pick primitive things, your culture needs an overhaul. If we still go to war, you know, uh, I think in the motion picture, Things to Come, somebody said to Dr. Cavell, or the guy in charge, that they're at war. He said, still at it, eh? See, which, there were some comments which normal people did not react to in the film at all. Uh, they couldn't react to it. They had no background to react to it. They found a bunch of scientists running things, and it just didn't look right. It looked like the answer was, H.G. Wells' friend said it sounds like fascism. Now, this system would sound like fascism, because Fresco lays out the schools, the buildings, the cities, only because not enough people are into that yet. But there will be more people laying it out as they get into it. Edison taught people how to use the electric light, how to build generators, or people that made generators for Edison taught people to make generators. But the average person did not get up and say, I don't want any generators, it's not God-given. There were some people that said that, that never used generators. They're out of business. So presenting ideas is not the answer. Preparing people's attitude to be able to hear new ideas, so when they listen to you, they say, I don't know enough about the subject to make a decision. I think I'm going back and read up on it and come back next week. Very few people do that. Sure, you'll find evidence among some academicians to support some of the concepts, but not enough. I hate to use academicians because they climb up on your back of innovators. But I do understand reliance on academicians to help support the project, but that isn't real. I think people had to learn from the Wright brothers how to build airplanes. If they built the first flying machine, the Army said, uh, the Army was the first to order five airplanes, the Wright brothers, mm -hmm. for surveillance. They said that the war tank is better for shooting. Airplanes could only carry, they used to carry a rifle. Before that, they threw bottles and stones at one another in the air. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. In the old crates. And they, because the airplane couldn't carry a cannon, can only carry a rifle. I would stand up and try to shoot the other plane down. 
and then they had a gun way above the wing so it would clear the propeller. Then somebody invented a synchronous machine gun that shoots between the rotation of the blades. Jeez. Do you know what I'm talking about? You don't? There's a bump on the camshaft. You know what that means? The camshaft turns the propeller and that bump operates the machine gun brrr, between where the blade is. Otherwise they shot off the propeller. Do you understand that? So it's the invention of the machine gun at the pilot's eye view that enable him to shoot down more planes. When the guns are on top, it's only an approximation. Do you understand? They were on the top wing above the height of the propeller or out on the wings, which didn't give you a good view. So uh, invention compensates for human insufficiency. But we have a lot of inventors making things that are useless too. How should be a public library, a school, intercommunication systems, not just a home with a laptop the house is becoming more than just a place to sleep and eat. In the future, it'll be a place with your built-in gym and everything else, if you can afford it. Or a society can make a house. The better integrated people are and interconnected, the richer society. People say, would everybody be uniform? If they were technically uniform, be useful. Non-technically, it would not be useful. There's nothing the matter with uniformity. All architects and all engineers have to pass a standard exam, which is okay for competence, you know. But if you know of technicians that advocate aspects of the Venus Project, great. Technicians eventually will do that. But they'll, remember, they bring with them some of the primordial slime, because they don't come from an environment that's objective or, or scientific, yet. Yeah. The scientific world is in the early phases of the scientific method. Academia is not the Venus Project, nor is it science as it's used today. They wouldn't work on bombers if they were part of the Venus Project. They wouldn't work on weapons. They wouldn't be patriotic if, if there was such a thing as a science. I'm sure there are. I'm sure they're having a tough time, too. I'm sure that some science must come to some conclusion similar, but not all joined together. It's very rare for someone to have this identical environment I had. It's very rare. No, they don't come to the same conclusion. No. They believe, most scientists believe in free will. I ask them. Don't forget, I met a lot of scientists. They said, do you believe in free will? Of course. I, I scored high in my school. And that means that something else. It means they have a different environment, but they don't look at it objectively. They feel they're achievers. If they get a Nobel Prize, they feel good about it, rather than share it with other labs. You know? They don't have the scientific attitude yet. It isn't here yet. And if somebody advocates it, then you build a following. And the following does not give an interpretation of Darwin's theory of evolution. There are people that do that too. So there's no evidence. There's lots of evidence. They don't know what evidence means. That the evidence is that the trees of, of a million years ago were different than the trees today. They evolve, they change. Not necessarily for the better. There were poisonous snakes, I'm sure, at the time of dinosaurs. I'm sure they were different than the snakes of today. But all animals seem to undergo change according to digging into the ground. I don't think people will study too much of the past except that nations took over, other nations took their wares, but no speeches by Patrick Henry or anybody else, because they couldn't say anything relevant. I don't listen to most political speeches, because they don't say anything. They really say we can improve automotive production by sharing ideas, 
with cut different companies. They don't say that. I don't find enough evidence to identify with peer groups. You know what I mean? I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm sure there are people out there in the scientific world that would jump onto this. But some scientists may say, uh, have you heard about the Venus Project? Oh, the guy is self-made. He, he never, never heard of making any contributions. You know, they might do that. I don't know what they do. But I can't concern myself with what they do. So here am I proposing something. I wish that a lot of doctors at the same time said, wash your hands. It was only one guy. And they said, what's your basis for that? They didn't all have microscopes in the old days, so he showed them germs on the skin. That was when the real change came, with the microscope. But, but there were people that even said, well, how do you know they caused disease? They were always present when a person had eruptions on the skin, that type of bacteria. When they had a visual problems and they found bacteria that were responsible, they always found similar bacteria on the eyes, on the hands, on the genitals. Sexually transmitted bacteria were the same. Do you understand what I mean? But it wasn't until the microscope that uniform agreement can be established. It could not be established by debate. No matter how, unless the doctor was very important, most doctors listened to the established leader of a system. We have no established leaders. All I'd like to do is get the ball rolling, take it from there. But before I get the ball rolling, I want to get the ideas out on education, on learning theory, on how the brain is influenced by environment. If I can get that out, it's a good safety measure to control values more so. I'd like to get I don't know out there too, more so. I don't know. I don't know enough about it to make a decision.